Good morning, Scott Willison here with the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. It's late spring, almost summer here in uh, northwestern Washington, and a lot of our lowland lakes are warming up. It's a great time to be out fly fishing for big largemouth bass. Uh, today I'm going to share one of my favorite bass flies with you uh, that we just affectionately call the big old bass worm. So. I'm starting with a size 1 Gamagatsu B10S in my vise. And I'm going to start with some red 140 denier ultra thread. We're going to put a weed guard on this fly so we can fish it in really heavy cover. Um, today I'll be using 20 pound Rio hard alloy. Any fairly stiff monofilament like Maxima Clear works very well also. And I'll take two pieces roughly about six inches long each. And I'm going to bind them together down the top of the shank and all the way down the bend. Do a couple of half hitches here, and then I'll clip that thread. To make this fly really durable, I like to use a little bit of brush on Zappa Gap and cover those thread wraps here. And then once that's had a chance to dry, we'll tie the rest of the fly. So for this port, I'm going to switch to black thread, still 140 denier ultra thread. I like to put just a little bit of lead or non or lead free wire at the head of the fly. This is 20 yacht. We got just eight, maybe eight wraps or so. Just makes this fly swim really nicely with kind of an up and down jigging motion in the water. For my entire body, I am going to use a mix of purple and black hairline polar chenille and I've cut one piece of each about a foot long I'll tie those both in right behind where my lead wire wraps are I'm going to use a furling technique to create a, a long, very wormy body. I'm going to take both strands, holding them together, and I'm just going to twist until they're really tight. Once I've got those twisted tight, I'm going to fold this tail over and kind of measure about how long I want the fly to be. So pinching in at the back end and then making sure to firmly hold the rest of it down to the shank of the hook. I'm just going to let go and that's going to spin up really nicely together to create a very durable, very translucent, multicolored tail. I'll then take a couple of thread wraps to Bind the rest down to the shank, and then advance my thread forward. 
And then with these loose ends together, I'm just going to wind those up to my thread to create the rest of the body. trim off our excess and then the last part is we are going to do a skirt in this case I'm going to stick with my black and purple theme and I'm going to use purple tipped black crazy legs I'm going to do about eight to ten legs per side Measure, measure these out so the back end of the legs extends just beyond the, the main body of the fly and the hook. Bind those down on top. take another bunch of legs, we'll invert the hook and do the same thing on the bottom. Once I've got them in there I kind of use my fingers to work the legs around the shank so they're 360 degrees around the front of the fly. Trim off the, the excess. And then make sure we really cover everything up with those thread wraps. I've got a pretty good sized head formed on this fly here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got one piece of monofilament going down each side of the hook here. These double weed guards are the way to go. You can fish this fly in just about any kind of cover without worrying about it snagging up or the hook fouling. And I'm going to make sure these tips are kind of even on the monofilament. And then I will insert them up through the eye on the underside of the fly. From there I can either push on them or pull on them to size them accordingly. I don't want them super big, but uh, I, want them, I want them to protect that hook point so I can kind of test with my finger and make sure I'm not getting the hook point there when I press on those. Once I think I have them where I want them, I'm just going to tightly bind those ends down. And then I'll check one, one last time, make sure they're in position. I'll then turn my hook back over and I'm going to clip off that mono flush with the eye. We'll go ahead and whip finish. Last thing I need to do is just get that mono out of the eye. I'm going to go ahead and flip the hook again. And with a lighter and a bodkin, I'll just heat up the end of a bodkin here. We'll 
finish this up with a little dab of head cement. And then just try to even up those, those legs a little bit on the top and bottom. Make sure they're all free to move. And there you have it, a big old bass worm. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.